Hey guys, how's it going? I uh, just wanted to come out and do a real quick video because this is something that I really freaked out about a couple of years ago. So we just moved to this property about four years ago and we have deer here. And I, uh, I just wanted to show you a few things. Okay, I have a couple of plants here that uh, the deer completely stripped all these leaves off of my uh, roselle hibiscus so this is one of the roselle hibiscus this is the one that you make the hibiscus tea out of it has these pretty little flowers on it but it completely stripped all of these leaves the deer completely stripped all of these leaves off of here and they all grew back and everything's fine okay so the thing about this is that <laughs> These Roselle hibiscus take quite a while to grow, and I was kind of worried about whether or not they were gonna make it because this is my first year, and I'm gonna let these corms get bigger, and um, then I'll be harvesting these, and they're just all over this plant. But the deer completely stripped all the leaves. Now, I heard someone say that you can eat these leaves, and I did, I bit into them, and they taste like, I guess I'll just show you. Mm. They taste like the real tart, like cranberry. Mm. So good. I don't actually eat the leaves. I guess you can, but I tasted the leaves after I heard that, that you can eat the leaves. And so I might be harvesting the leaves next year. Um, but yeah, I can see why the deer ate them. They're really good. They're really tasty. My poor little... Um, uh, jalapeno pepper plant and they completely stripped this plant as well but I wanted to tell you don't go pull the plant out of the ground just because the deer or the rabbits or whatever ate on it because everything came back all these leaves were completely stripped bare and I had picked a lot of jalapenos off of it but you can see all the leaves came back and the peppers are starting to grow again and uh, it's fine actually wasn't such a bad thing that they did it when they did it because it was in the middle of the heat of the summer. But you can see, look at all of those peppers. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then they have blooms and blossoms all over it. Nine, 10, 11. Let me see, let me get that one. 11. And then I just have a whole lot of little blossoms where we'll, we'll be getting more, we'll be getting more peppers coming in. And this plant right here was the same way. They're, they're all starting to grow back now. So we have a lot of, uh, all the leaves have come back. The blossoms are blooming. The peppers are starting to grow again. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, they just completely stripped this plant bare and uh, just don't throw them out. Don't pull them out because they'll come back. Now here's one right here. Now this is some larkspur that I'm gonna save the seeds from, so I'm leaving that in the ground. But this is one, this is a Roselle hibiscus where they came and they completely stripped it bare. And maybe this one will come back, maybe it won't. I don't know, I'm not pulling it out. I'm not gonna leave, I'm not going to, I'm just gonna leave it here see what happens this one was the same way now these leaves are coming back and uh, so we'll see what happens on that one <laughs> looks like some blue bonnets are trying to grow right there but they did this before with my okra plants and I didn't plant any okra this is just from the seeds that fell last year but they, they stand over here in the shade but the deer just completely stripped all my okra the okra plants got up real big and um, they came in and they were eating all of my okra leaves. And uh, I was like, oh no. I mean, I'm not a big okra eater. My husband likes okra. I grow it because people in my family like okra. And they completely stripped it bare. And then all the okra pods just started growing and I could see the okra. They didn't eat the okra. They just ate the leaves, the deer. So when it comes to growing a garden and doing it with um, deer or rabbits. I don't really, I don't do a lot of prevention to try to keep the deer out except for this guy right here. This guy right here. He's my deer deterrent. So, so Ace, yeah, 
he has a job to do. We have our acreage cross fenced and the deer can just jump over it really easily. But I've seen them like face to face, not really face to face, but they're staring at each other like who's gonna move first? And then the deer run off because the deer are a lot more um, timid and shy, I guess, or scared than Ace is. Ace is just curious and he'll just run them off. But yeah, so I thought I would show that real quick because I think that's really important to know. I didn't just go pull it out. I just left it in the ground and everything started growing back. So a lot of times whenever I see something starting to die back, I leave it there. There was a couple of trees. Um, this didn't have to do with the deer, but this pomegranate tree looked like it completely died last year and I didn't pull it up and it came back. I thought it was dead, but I left it in the ground because I wasn't sure what was going to happen. I have two pomegranate trees, that one right there, and it looked fine. It was doing fine. I wasn't, there was no worries about that. And then this one completely died back and I was like, oh man, I lost a pomegranate tree, but it didn't. It came back. So, but while I'm on the subject, so these are my three pear trees right here. I mean, excuse me, my three plum trees right here. And uh, last year, uh, so this is our third year with these trees. And the, the first couple of years, they started dying back way before any of the other fruit trees did. So I have pomegranate, cherry, pear trees, um, and some apple trees over there. But they started dying back and I was freaking out. I was like, oh no, I'm gonna lose all my plum trees. And then they came back. So they just lose their leaves a little sooner. And this one, I think we lost it this year. I don't think it was getting enough water, but uh, these two trees I know are fine. But this tree right here, that tree right there, it's hard to kind of see, let me get back. So this one right here, and this one right here, but I'm not gonna pull this out. I'm gonna wait. This happened, happened with a fig tree that I have back there as well. Completely died back. I had two fig trees and I put them in a place that I just don't see very often. I was trying to protect it from the northern wind and um, I just didn't water it and they just completely died back. And then this year, they came back again. I was like, yay, the fig trees came back. <laughs> so it might've been from the rootstock instead of where it was grafted on but I'm okay with that. I'm gonna let it stay. I'm not worried about it. I'm just, whatever figs I get from it, I get from it. So um, yeah, so that is um, plants that have died back. They've been eaten on by the deer. You think they're a goner and then all of a the sudden, then they just come back. So don't be too quick to pull stuff out of the ground because you see that it looks like it's dead or it's gone, it's a goner. Don't write them off too soon because that's something that I think will be um, a surprise to you if you just leave it in the ground and it could just come back. It may not. It may not survive because some plants can take it, some plants can't. But it's always interesting to me what happens if you just let nature take over. And I'm just definitely a lazy kind of gardener. Uh, let's just see what nature does. Let's see what God does in the gardens and um, you know, a lot of times it'll surprise you. All right, that'll do it for this one. Be sure to hit that little subscribe button if you haven't done so already and hit the little bell and that'll notify you when a new video comes up. See you next time. Y'all stay safe out there. Bye for now.